And today we're going to discuss one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology as of 2025, the mysterious dark energy. Mostly based on some of the fascinating recent developments that actually do challenge our understanding of the universe, based on some of the recent data and based on some of the most recent studies. And in case you're not familiar with this unusual phenomenon, dark energy is this unusual enigmatic force that we believe makes the universe expand faster and faster for reasons we still don't really understand. But based on some of the new studies and new observations, we are forced to ask a new question. Is dark energy truly a constant or is it evolving and has evolved over time? With the biggest question that we're going to answer near the end of the video being how and when will the universe end? With at least one recent study even tackling this in more detail and discovering that universe really only has something like 20 more billion years before the end. But I guess here let's discuss some of the basics first in case you're not familiar with any of these concepts. And here all of this is based on the main cosmological model. It's known as the Lambda CDM. The model that states that dark energy is a constant in this case represented as the letter lambda, and it's also uniformly distributed through the universe and seems to be responsible for what Einstein once called the cosmological constant. And while for many years it has been relatively successful at explaining most of the universe, especially describing the evolution of the universe since the mysterious Big Bang, and of course explaining how and why things changed, how old the universe is, and how it's probably going to end later. But some of the recent observations seem to show just a few cracks in this previously undisputed cosmological model. And so let's discuss some of these new intriguing puzzles. And I think the biggest one comes from the biggest search for dark energy ever, DESI. The enormous dark energy study using what's known as dark energy spectroscopic instrument that for several years now has been collecting huge amounts of data on various galaxies and various distant objects in order to calculate the overall expansion of the universe and to calculate that cosmological constant even more accurately. And so since 2021, DESI has been meticulously mapping distances between millions of galaxies, with one main focus being what's known as BAO, baryon acoustic oscillations. We've recently discussed this concept in one of the videos in the description, but in a nutshell, BAO are sort of like these enormous bubbles in space, literally representing the earliest sound in the universe. These are sound bubbles, and it's technically sound fossils or fossilized sound waves from extremely early universe that provide us with a cosmic ruler to measure expansion over time. And while in April of 2025, DESI did actually uncover something somewhat unusual. You can learn more about this in one of the previous videos in the description, but here by combining bow measurements with data from the cosmic microwave background and also a lot of observations of various type 1a supernova, several research teams discovered weak hints that dark energy might be weakening over time implying that the universe's acceleration is slowing down and implying that dark energy is evolving, which was a sharp departure from the previous assumption that this is a constant. But because this was such a groundbreaking claim, naturally this sparked a lot of debate in the scientific community and there's already been quite a lot of counter-arguments. Here's one of these counter-arguments that you can find in the description. Here, George F. Statue from University of Cambridge, who initially played a key role in the Planck mission that provided some of the best observations of the cosmic microwave background, argues that a lot of these claims are not very strong. He suggests that the evidence for the evolving dark energy only becomes apparent when the supernova data is included in the analysis. And so here he believes that this particular supernova data set that was used by DESI may not be accurate enough and potentially creates systematic errors resulting in dark energy that does not seem to be constant. Now he also criticizes some of the statistical analysis and some of the assumptions with the dark energy model, but the main point is that he does provide at least some counter evidence that maybe these results are just a little bit skewed. And he's definitely not alone. There are also some other researchers from Princeton University, like Matthias Zaldariaga, that emphasize that we need to have a more complicated model before we can make these strong conclusions. And so based on a lot of counter arguments and additional arguments, right now researchers basically all agree that we need more data and even better data that hopefully DESI will get in the next five years. And so right now, even though there is definitely a strong argument that dark energy is not a constant, none of this is definitive yet. And on top of this, we even have some contradictory evidence from the X-ray observations using Erosita. Erosita is a European X-ray telescope 
that collected data for several years before being disabled. And while unlike the SE, which primarily measures distances, Erosita focuses on galactic clusters. And here is what some of these images produced by Erosita look like. And all of these are, of course, the largest gravitationally bound structures in the entire universe. But there is something really exciting that can be studied by using this, which is what was recently done in a study in the description. And so here this dark energy's anti-gravity effect is supposed to push objects apart and suppress the formation of these massive clusters. And that means that by counting how many galaxy clusters formed over the cosmic time, we can technically infer some of the properties of this bizarre dark energy. And so using Erosita data from the EFEDS survey, researchers discovered that dark energy represents approximately 76% of all energy density in the entire universe, with calculations identifying that energy density of this bizarre phenomenon appears to be relatively uniform in space and relatively constant in time. Or in other words, all of these galactic clusters and the overall clustering effect seems to be more or less the same as if dark energy remained a constant for a period of at least several billion years. And so in this sense, this finding seems to agree with some of the independent approaches, including previous studies using galactic clusters that very often used weak gravitational lensing, along with the cosmic microwave background, in order to discover the same thing we've discovered decades ago. The standard cosmological model where dark energy is a constant seems to kind of make sense. And that of course creates this unusual tension where we seem to have different results from different observations, and some of these results seem to really not match. But here it's kind of worth noting that Erosita's initial sample only covered approximately 1% of the full night skies. And so here there's a very very high chance for some kind of a bias. We would definitely need to have way more samples and covering a lot more parts of the night sky before we can make these very strong conclusions. In comparison, DESI, or Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, captures approximately 34% of the total night sky, or approximately 14,000 square degrees. And so the results from DESI are still just a little bit stronger. Which basically brings us to this new question. Is this unusual tension and basically all of these problems created by the observations of supernova? Or just to rephrase this, are supernova still a solid standard candle? Can we use them to measure distances? And here we do have another separate study that provides us with certain answers. Both DESI and the new Union 3 analysis, which we'll talk about in a second, rely heavily on what's known as Type 1a supernova. This is the supernova involving white dwarfs. When white dwarfs reach a certain mass, approximately 1.4 solar masses, they essentially explode, producing a relatively similar brightness that doesn't usually change too much. And because of this, we can use this brightness to establish distances in space. But the main assumption here is that all of these white dwarfs can usually reach very similar peak luminosity, allowing us to then determine distances. This is actually how initially, back in 1998, researchers discovered that the universe was accelerating, or how they even found this dark energy to begin with. But we have a new discovery coming out of another facility known as ZTF, Zwicky Transient Facility, an instrument used by Caltech in order to discover supernova pretty much in real time. It's usually able to capture and report the supernova within just a few minutes. And in this case, this was the analysis of nearly 4,000 nearby supernova, with this being one of the largest samples to date. This is kind of what all of this looks like if you were to try to imagine it in real life. And here the analysis revealed that a lot of white dwarf stars seem to explode through a variety of different mechanisms, in many cases involving two stars, and in many cases involving stars cannibalizing their companions. Or just to rephrase this, there seems to be a much larger diversity when it comes to these explosions, thus potentially leading to different luminosities, and having a major implication on the use of these supernova to measure distances in space. And that's because the analysis of dark energy and the use of these supernova as the standard distance candles demands that these supernova are all standardized and the luminosity is relatively similar. But the results here suggest that these cosmic blasts are not as reliable as we once believed. Which means that some of these cosmic measurements may need to be questioned once again, with some of the conclusions previously potentially incorrect. And so one of the main conclusions from the recent study in the description directly questions the validity of supernova dataset used in most of these cosmological studies, but in light of these discoveries and in light of these conclusions, at least one recent study published in the Astrophysical Journal introduces what's known as Union 3. 
completion of 2087 cosmologically useful Type 1A supernova, essentially picking the ones that we think may provide us with the most accurate results. Here all of the supernova were put on the same distance scale, with the study getting rid of any supernova that were seen as outliers or whose explosions were difficult to explain. And this is a massive dataset that makes us an invaluable resource for cosmological research. And it doesn't just include these supernova, it also creates a new updated framework. Framework referred to as Unity 1.5, explicitly accounting for various effects simultaneously. So for example here it tries to remove various selection effects, such as various biases, one bias being we tend to observe brighter supernova or the ones that are close to us, and also tries to match these supernova by brightness overall light curve and overall color, removing any supernova that do not appear similar, which in the end creates much more accurate data, removing any potential sources of error and potential biases. And so using this new dataset and these 2000 supernova, what did researchers discover about dark energy and the universe's expansion? Well, surprisingly, once again, there seems to be just a little bit of a tension with the main cosmological model. The study found at least 1.7 to 2.6 sigma tension, suggesting possible evidence for what researchers are referring to as thawing of dark energy. Or just to rephrase this, they find at least some evidence that dark energy's strength may be changing over time, just as shown by observations from DESI. And so here, once again, we have this counter evidence suggesting that dark energy seems to be weakening over time. Yay, the tension is back. And so the results from this very thorough study still suggest that dark energy is changing and that the expansion rate of the universe potentially changed over time. And so where does this leave us and what does this say about cosmology and of course the universe itself? Well, right now there is really no conclusion. We have a lot of conflicting signals, a lot of conflicting results, and some of the biggest surveys seem to find results that do not match. For example, observations in the X-rays seem to suggest the universe is constant, yet observations with DESI and observations of supernova suggest that the universe is changing. And this fundamental disagreement right now does not have any explanation. And though the biggest question right now is how reliable are these supernova and can we still use them as standard candles, since that last study I discussed seems to find very similar results even using some of the most robust examples of supernova, here we just don't really have any conclusions. Something here definitely doesn't add up and something here needs to be recalculated or reobserved. But it looks like at least for now the Hubble tension and the discrepancy of dark energy and the cosmological constant seem to persist, which means that we need to observe things even more, we need more, better data, and possibly new telescopes, new instruments, and independent observations. Luckily for us, the Nancy Grace Roman Telescope and the Euclid Telescope will hopefully have enough data in the next five years to provide additional results. These powerful new telescopes will gather even more data about supernova and baryon acoustic oscillations, providing sharper measurements and hopefully providing an actual explanation. But assuming that the cosmological constant is not a constant and that dark energy is weakening, so what does this mean for the universe as a whole? Well, using various surveys, including DESI, researchers developed a new model that predicts the end of the universe. And it's reported in this study on the lifespan of our universe. And it looks like everything will end in a big crunch in approximately 20 billion years from today giving the universe approximately 33.3 billion years in total. And this model essentially suggests that after 7 billion years, the universe will stop expanding and will start contracting, with everything eventually collapsing back into a single point, with the maximum size of the universe in 7 billion years from today being approximately 69% larger than today. But as this gradual contraction begins, gravitational forces will contract it faster and faster, with the negative cosmological constant eventually taking over which 20 billion years later results in a very rapid collapse of everything and basically the big crunch event. But obviously all of this is just an assumption for now and even the authors themselves talk about very large margins of error, mostly because our data is still not that good. And so at least for now this conclusion, though exciting, is still kind of speculative. But if dark energy is indeed weakening, big crunch represents the most likely outcome. And so yeah, exciting new observations and propositions, but unfortunately still no conclusive evidence or conclusive results, just more tensions and more disagreements. And until future studies and future agreements or disagreements, that's all I wanted to mention. 
Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel Patreon, where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, maybe support this by joining the channel membership that grants you early access, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.